What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about the best perks in Black Ops Cold War. Now most of these are pretty obvious, but there's a few uh, perks in here that I don't see a lot of people running that are really, really good. They're not really the normal perks that you see in other games or just kind of what you see just while you're playing in general. You don't see a lot of people running these. Uh, before I get into that, make sure if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, of course, a lot of people that watch the videos aren't subscribed, so... Of course, like I said, if you can just take just that second to do that, I would really appreciate it. And also, be sure you check out everything down in the description if you have not before. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, uh, if you'd like to join the community Discord, or you want to check out the affiliate here on the channel, GT Racing, who sells gaming chairs and office chairs, desks, that kind of thing. All that stuff is linked down in the description. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, some of the best perks in-game, of course, uh, are the normal ones that you can imagine. Uh, you know, your flag jackets, your ghosts, your ninjas, that kind of thing. But when we look kind of in depth into each individual perk uh, in perk one, two, and three, you will notice there's a lot of good stuff in perk one and perk three slots. Uh, engineer, of course, is not bad. This is going to detect enemy equipment, score streaks through walls, see enemy score streaks on your minimap, reroll care packages. Honestly, besides just detecting the equipment, being able to see those score streaks on your minimap is very, very handy. That way, if you're running around with a tube needing to shoot down score streaks of any kind, from UAVs to choppers, makes it a lot easier. So if you have not ran Engineer before, it's kind of the same as it has been in every COD, but it's always a good perk. I have ran it some off and on throughout the life cycle of this game so far, and pretty much any COD that there's ever an option to have an Engineer-style perk in, I will run it off and on in there as well, just depending on what I'm playing. Now, when it comes to paranoia, I'm not a fan of this at all because it makes me extremely paranoid. <laughs> because every time someone aims at you, you hear that breathing kind of sound, uh, your vision pulses. And to me, it makes me play a little bit slower than I should because I'm always worried that someone's closer than I think they are. So I'm not a big fan of this, but I know, I know a lot of people that snipe like to run paranoia. So if you're a fan of paranoia, that is perfectly fine. But just not my thing, honestly. A uh, flak jacket, of course, would take less damage from explosives and molotovs. Uh, combat flame bows. This does not help with the uh, mines that are on the ground. So if you have this on, you run just straight over one, you're still going to get blown up. It's kind of goofy that it doesn't help with that. Consider that's the same kind of thing as a bouncing Betty or a claymore, but it is what it is. Uh, it does not help with that, so just keep that in mind. Tack mask, pretty much the same as always. Maximize uh, resistance to flashbangs and stun grenades, immune to gas, which is pretty helpful because those gas grenades can be annoying in, or gas uh, mines can be annoying in different objective modes. Flak jacket and tack mask are usually the go-to in this perk slot. Uh, like I said, engineer is pretty decent, but there's one here at the bottom that I think I don't see a lot of people running. I see more now than I did to begin with. That is forward in, uh, intel. This is going to give you a larger mini map overall, and I do mean larger. It's going to expand that map by a lot. But the best thing about it is going to show you indicators for the enemy reinforcements. So every time an enemy spawns up, it's going to ping a little dot uh, on your mini map kind of the area that the enemy team has spawned in. Even if they have Ghost on, it is still going to ping this. There's only one counter to this that anybody knows about so far, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. But like I said, even if they have Ghost on, they're still going to ping up with forward intel. Now, this is really good for learning learning the maps, learning the rotations, uh, learning you know, uh, where people are spawning. Uh, in my opinion, it's a little much, of, a little kind of turn, going to turn into a crutch perk. I, I'm not sure. I think a lot of people are going to use it eventually and realize how good it is, and then not quit using it, uh, not really learning the spawns for themselves. The more I play the game, the more I've figured out how the spawn system works. But when I play team deathmatch, I use forward intel for one reason. Team deathmatch spawns are very odd in this game compared to things like the other modes I play, like Dom and Hardpoint. In team deathmatch, the spawns will be split, and you and the enemy will spawn in both spawns a lot of the times. And you'll just spawn up and either be getting shot in the back before you move. Or you'll spawn up and shoot an enemy in the back. You'll spawn up, you know, left to right to each other. So forward intel is pretty handy in team deathmatch. When it comes to playing Dom and Hardpoint and all that kind of stuff, I usually just either switch to Engineer or Tack Mask. Now when it comes to Perk 2, there are a few good perks in here in my opinion, but not as good as the other two slots. Um, of course, Assassin is enemies that appear on your minimap when shooting or revealed by a spy plane will have a crosshair indicator instead of a red dot. If they're on a kill streak, you will get extra score for taking them down. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I mean, it's not this crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're going to show up on the minimap anyway while shooting if they don't have a silencer on. But at the same time, 
When you're facing another enemy and you see that dot pop up on your mini map, in the past you never knew if they were on a kill, uh, score streak. Now, doesn't no matter kind of where they're at, as long as you can see, as long as you have the range on your mini map, and if you're using something like forward intel that's making your map a larger size, you can pretty much find anyone that's on a kill streak if they're not using, you know, if they're they're shooting their weapon, you're going to see that crosshair indicator on them, and you can go find these people and take them out before they ever get their streaks. And I don't know how much I like this. Uh, it's it's okay, I guess. It's not just extremely overpowered. Because if they're really good players, and they're still going to be able to beat you most of the time. But at the same time, I feel like someone that is on a kill streak deserves to be on that kill streak. And just showing everyone on the other team where they're at when, you sh when they shoot is kind of unfair in my opinion. But I know a lot of people like to run Assassin. And of course it's there. So I understand why people do run it. I mean, it's not like people are just going to skip over this and say, I'm not going to run this at all. So it is pretty decent to run, in my opinion. Uh, one of my favorites to run, of course, is Gearhead. This reduces field upgrade time, and you can store up to uh, two field upgrade charges at once. Now, when it comes to something like a uh, field mic, it's going to take you around four to five minutes to be able to have two of them. Uh, you can set two of them out at once. Only two, if you go with three, that will uh, get rid of the first one you put out. I like to run either the jammer or a field mic, so this is really good for that. But any kind of equipment you run, gearhead is nice. If you like to play objective games, you want trophy systems, you will have to wait a while for that second one if you want to wait to throw out two at once. But just keep in mind, it does reduce the cooldown time as well. So I'm able to get jammers and field mics very quickly in most games, uh, even if I don't wait to put two out. If I just put one out at a time, the other ones will still respawn pretty quickly or regenerate pretty quickly. Oh, the other part that I really like to use, of course, is Scavenger. This just replenishes ammo from fallen players. It's not like past Scavengers and other Call of Duty games where you're getting, where you're able to get stuns and flashbangs and grenades back or anything like that. Now, there are ammo crates on some of these maps. Some of the maps that I have not found ammo crates still, so I don't know if they even exist on all the maps or not. But, in my opinion, I prefer to have Scavenger on. I can kind of control when I'm going to get ammo. You know, if I'm running out, if I kill someone close range, I can just run over the bag. Uh, I will say that it is a bit weird at times. Um, I have noticed that I have shot several enemies. That, you know, I've got double kills, triple kills. I'll run over these people, uh, that run over the, their bodies, and there will be no ammo there. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But uh, in my opinion, Scavenger is still one of the best go-to perks in Perk 2. Uh, if you're going to sit back, I, I, I don't think Scavenger is really that great because you're not going to be able to run out and get that ammo if you're going to kind of sit back and hold angles. You might want to use a different field upgrade, you know, the one that gives you ammo if you're going to just sit back and play that kind of play style. When it comes to Quartermaster, this will recharge your equipment over 25 seconds, which is not bad if you want to run grenades, flashbangs, and just spam them uh, like Dom or something like that. Quartermaster is pretty decent. And when it comes to Tracker, same kind of concept as Tracker has always been. You see the imprint of enemy footsteps. The difference is uh, aiming at enemies will reveal them on your team's mini-map, which is pretty handy, but the footsteps themselves are not very visible. Um, tracker also will get you killed if you don't watch it. Now, I did use it in Modern Warfare just to get an idea of where people are going, but a lot of people want to chase these footprints, and that is always a horrible idea because someone can just go around a corner and wait on you. Even though you can see their footprints, you still will get beat a lot of times if you're chasing them. I just like to have intel about where people went. And uh, in this game, it's not really that bright on the floor, so it, personally for me, it's not really good for information. Like I said, I'm not trying to run enemies down, track them down, that kind of thing. Like I said, the best thing about it, in my opinion, is aiming at enemies will reveal them on your teammates mini-map, which will be pretty handy. But just be careful if you are running tracker. Don't always just go chasing footsteps because a lot of times uh, what you find on the other end of that footstep may not be the best thing because it may be somebody waiting in a corner for you. Uh, and when it comes to perk 3, kind of like perk 1, there's a lot of good things here. Gung-ho is a good perk, in my opinion. You can fire your weapon. Use equipment while sprinting. Move at full speed when reloading. Switch weapons faster. Take less damage from falling. And fire more accurately while sliding. My goodness, this thing has just about everything you can imagine in it if you'd like to run and gun. It is crazy how many things are inside of this perk. Uh, the fire more accurately while sliding would have been a lot more uh, OP in my opinion if sliding was like it was back in the beta. But of course they have nerfed sliding, thank goodness. And sliding now is a bit wonky uh, a lot of times you get beat when you slide in my opinion you can sprint to fire faster than you can slide to fire but it still makes it a little bit better with gung-ho on in my opinion but take sliding out completely everything else you get with gung-ho makes it worth running if you like to run and gun
Of course, Ghost, this is the one that everybody loves, the one that everybody uses, and probably one of the best ones to run right now. The game's still new. Everyone's using UAVs. Of course, you're undetectable by spy planes whenever you are moving, planning or defusing a bomb, or controlling score streaks. This is not like Ghost in Modern Warfare. You cannot sit in a corner of the entire game and be covered up by Ghost. If you stop moving, if you ADS, you're going to pop up on that mini-map. You do have a couple seconds there where you know you're not going to show up. You can walk around the map and not show up. But if you do stop, if you do stop to ADS, you are going to show up if there is a UAV available. Cold-blooded, of course, the same as pretty much cold-blooded has always been. AI-controlled score streaks that will not target, that we that are not going to target you. Player-controlled control score streaks will not highlight you, so that is pretty handy for like cruise missiles and things like that. Uh, show up on thermal. Players uh, in vehicles won't see your nameplate. Immune to uh, flashlight attachments. A lot of people are starting to use flashlight attachments because they have realized that you can see enemies at long ranges. You can see enemies hiding in places like on cartel in the bushes. So cold-blooded is a pretty good perk uh, if you want to stay off that kind of, you know, m map from kill streaks and player flashlights. Of course, you can run Lawbreaker and run Ghost, Cold-Blooded, and Ninja. It is pretty handy. I have done those three together so far, and it is pretty nice, uh, I will say. Of course, Ninja is not completely silent. You sprint more quietly, resistance to field mics when sprinting. Of course, it's speak only when necessary. You can still hear someone with Ninja when they're right up on you, but they have to be right up on you. So this is very handy because there's a lot of things in game that are very loud. The sound's different than Modern Warfare 3. You can hear enemies coming from great distances, in my opinion. Not bad as it was in the beta. I think they did tone down those footsteps some. But Ninja is still very good, and Ninja and Ghost are my go-to if I run Perk Greed. Like I said, if I run Lawbreaker, I really have enjoyed running Ghost, Cold-Blooded, and Ninja together. So if you have not tried that, you might want to try that out. And last but not least, we have Spycraft. Now, this is the one that is reportedly the counter to Forward Intel. Like I said, if you have Ghost on, Forward Intel will still find you. If you have Spycraft on, Forward Intel will not uh, find you. So, you have like, another choice here. Or you could run Lawbreaker with Spycraft, Ninja, and Ghost. You could run Ghost and Spycraft. Spycraft does a lot of things. Even though it does not say that it is the counter to um, Forward Intel, Everyone was reporting that it is. I have not tested this myself, so let me know if you have. Uh, but hack enemy field upgrades, which is just very good by itself. Immune to counter spy planes, which is also very good. There's a lot of counter spy plane and spy plane spam. Jammers, trackers, and paranoia, also very good. And you will not try, uh, trigger proximity mines or gas grenades. Uh, booby trap enemy care packages. So this thing is kind of like a, a combination of engineer and what Hardline used to be back in the day when you know, Hardline could uh, re-roll care packages. There's been some other ones that could booby trap care packages. This is kind of a, a mix of all that stuff put together. I guess maybe not necessarily just Hardline, but just some of the ideas from a lot of different perks is kind of what I'm getting towards. Uh, the best thing about this, in my opinion, is the proximity or gas mines. Even though you can duck these proximity mines, you can lay down. I have noticed, I've had a lot of issues. When I lay down, I still die. Sometimes I can go around a corner be completely past the proximity mine and be going into the other room, it will still kill me somehow. It is absolutely amazing at times how I die to some of these proximity mines. So, in my opinion, Spycraft is definitely worth looking at. Uh, I know, like I said, there's a lot of perks in this game that a lot of people are just going to gravitate towards because they're the normal. Your flak jackets, your ghost, your ninjas, your tack mask. But be aware, there's a lot of things in all of these perks, uh, groups, especially perk 1 and perk 3, that are really good that have not been in the game before. And I think a lot of people are going to start going with some of these other perks than just the normal ones because they're going to start to realize how good they really are. Of course, leave me a comment with your thoughts, guys. And of course, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like. And I'll catch you all next time.